All right, problem 29, we're given a random sample of 1,018 city, re city residents that were asked to rate their level of support for a proposal being considered by the city council. The table shows the respondent by level of support. All right, so we can see here three different levels of support, very supportive, somewhat supportive, and not supportive. Based on the responses, which of the following is a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all city residents who would respond very supportive or somewhat supportive of, of the proposal? Okay, so we wanna make a confidence interval of this form, because we're trying to estimate the population proportion. So our, our form is gonna be P hat plus or minus Z star times the square root of P hat times one minus P hat over N. So P hat's the sample proportion, N is the sample size, and Z star is a critical value, or the value that we're gonna use for the 95% confidence interval. So let's first look at P hat. P hat, we're gonna take this total, 336 plus 387, out of the 1018, because it says those who would who respond very supportive or somewhat supportive. So let's first see what that would be. 336 plus 387, 723 out of 1018. I mean, we get about 0.71 as p hat. So we're going to get about 0.71 plus or minus. And our z star is going to be the, the z score where there's 95% of the area of the normal curve trapped between. So that means there's going to be 2.5% to either side. So you can either use table A or technology. I like to use technology. So um, here we can go to the function distribution and you go inverse norm. And you would just enter the area to one side. So 0.025, press enter, and you'll get the Z star is about 1.96. So we're gonna have 0 0.71 plus or minus 1.96 times the square root of so we just do p hat, which is about 0.71. One minus p hat will be about 0.29 all over n, which is 1,018. And then we just use our calculator to get a approximation. So 0.71 times 0.29 divided by 1018 square rooted times 1.96, and we'll get 0 0.02787 about. We could say about 0 0.028. And then our answer then would be E. All right, problem 30, we have that a manufacturer of cell phones, cell phone batteries claims that the average number of recharge cycles for its batteries is 400. A consumer, a consumer group will obtain a random sample of 100 of the manufacturer's batteries and will calculate the mean number of recharge cycles, which of the following statements is justified by the central limit theorem. So let's remember what the central limit theorem says, which is that if you, have um, a sample and you're studying, you're trying to estimate population mean, then if you take a sample that's at least size 30 or bigger, then the distribution of the sampling or the, the sampling distribution of the population mean or the sample mean, I bad, will be about normal. So again, we want a sample size of at least 30. So a sample size of at least 30. Then we could say that the distribution is approximately normal. So let's see which of these best says that. So A says the distribution of the number of recharge cycles for the, the for the sample is approximately normal because the population mean of four. No, nope, we don't care about population mean. 
we want sample mean. One sample we want sample size. I'm sorry. So it's not going to be a. The distribution of the number of recharge cycles for the sample is approximately normal because the sample size of 100 is greater than 30. Okay, let's pay attention to this. So the distribution of the number of recharge cycles. So we're, we're not looking at recharge cycles. What we want specifically is the distribution of the sample means. So it's, just, it's because um, when, if we go back to chapter, this is something usually cover in chapter seven, dealing with sample distributions. We're basically saying that if we were to take, if we were to take repeated samples of size 100, and we're to count on um, where to calculate the mean of this distribution, then we would find that would be approximately normal. So this is kind of there to trick you, but it's not going to be B. See the distribution of the number of recharge cycles for the population is approximately normal. Okay, so now we don't care about the population not population, so it won't be C. The distribution of the sample means, okay, of the number of recharge cycles is, is approximately normal because the sample size is greater than 30. So this is what we want, because this is sample means. See here, it says number of recharge cycles. We want the, the sample mean. We're looking at mean specifically. So D is gonna be our answer. Let me just go through E. The distribution of the sample means that the number of recharge cycles is approximately normal because the population mean. Okay, so this one's kind of like that one, except we, we're, not, we're not looking at the population mean, we're looking at the sample size. So it's definitely going to be D. Number 31. A news organization conducted a survey about preferred methods for obtaining the news. They ran a sample of 100 of 1,605 living adults, or adults living in a certain state was selected. And 16.2% of the adults in the sample reported that the television was their preferred method. Which of the following is an appropriate margin of error for a 90% confidence interval to estimate the population proportion of all adults living in the state who would report that the television is their preferred method for obtaining the news? Okay, so let's just review the, um, the, the confidence interval for estimating population um, proportion, which we kind of just did, we kind of just did, but let me just go over it again. So we have the sample proportion plus or, plus or minus Z star times the square root of P hat times one minus P hat over N, and you're taking that entire square root. So this is our point estimate, and this is gonna be our margin of error. Because remember, this tells you about how far above and below the point estimate our interval is going to range from. So let's figure out, we want to figure out what this would be. So we want to find Z star for the 90% confidence interval. So again, uh, we're looking at the normal curve with 90% in the middle. And we have our negative Z star and our positive Z star. So let's first find out what that would be. And I recommend using the calculator. Go to the distribution function, inverse norm. If it's 90% confidence interval, that means there's only 5% to either side. So 0.05, and we would get about 1.64 as our Z star. And this, I guess one point that's around at the 1.645. Oops, and then a P hat. We got that is our P hat would be 0.1622 because we got 16.2%. 16 .2%, so 0 0.162. And then our N would be 1,605. So putting this all together, our Z star matches. So it's going to be one of these, P hat, 
but 0.162, so it looks like it's going to be A for sure. The answer is A. All right, 32. We got that a fitness center offers a one-month program designed to reduce body fat through exercise. The table shows the body fat percentage before and after completing the program for 10 randomly selected participants. Okay, so we have the participants ID. Then we have the, the before body fat percentage and the after body fat percentages. So the director of the program wants to investigate whether knowing the body fat percentage before beginning the program can help predict the body fat percentage for someone who completes the program. So the one after. So which of the following procedures is the most appropriate for such an investigation? Okay, so this is, so we're trying to estimate the before percentage to, no, I'm sorry, we're trying to use the before percentage to help estimate the after percentage. So let's call it before percentage X and let's call it after percentage Y. So we're trying to estimate y from x. So this wouldn't be like a significance test or like um well, well not a, well, it wouldn't be the significance test for, for proportion or means because what we're trying to essentially do is kind of guess the value for one variable given the other. So what this is actually going to be will be E, where it's actually gonna be a linear regression t-test for slope. Because we're essentially trying to find the relationship between two variables. Like if we were trying to, like we're trying to see if maybe the the higher the X, the, the higher the Y um, and vice versa. So if you remember like in general, like your slope intercept form or if this is usually a chapter covered um, near the end of the course, or sometimes in the earlier, in the middle maybe. Oh, it's typically in the form Y equals A or alpha plus beta X, or Y hat equals A plus B X. We're trying to estimate the relationship between the after body fat percentage and the before body fat percentage. So the answer is gonna, gonna be E. A recent survey estimated that 19% of all people living in certain regions regularly use sunscreen when going outdoors. The margin of error for the estimate was one percentage point. Based on the estimate and the margin of error, which of the following is an appropriate conclusion? Okay, so it estimated 19% and the margin of error is one percentage point. Let's just write down what this means. So. It basically got a p hat of 0.19, margin of error of 0.01. So this leads to a confidence interval of 0.19 plus or minus 0.01, or a confidence interval from 0.18, 18% to 20%. So let's see what they say. So which of these will be correct? So approximately 1% of all the people living in the region were surveyed. No, that's, that has nothing to do with that. It's not gonna be A. Between 18 and 20% of all the people living in the region were surveyed. This has nothing to do with how many people were surveyed. This has to do with what percentage of all those people they would estimate to use sunscreen regularly. So it's not gonna be A or B. All possible samples of the same size will result in between 18 and 20% of those surveyed in the cane day. You regularly use sunscreen. Okay, so this may sound right, but um, it's not guaranteed that all of the possible samples, even though we use the same size sample, that there you're always going to get between this range. That's not guaranteed. Um, that's kind of I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess you're trying to trick you with um with a concept from sampling distributions, but it's not going to be C. D, the probability is 0.01 that a person is in the region will use sun. No, it's not that, no. 
It is plausible that the percent of people living in the, the percent of people living in the region who regularly use sunscreen is 18.5%. Okay, so it's going to be E because 18.5% is in this region or is in this interval. So it's a rational estimation of the true of the true percent. Remember, our confidence interval tells you a range of possible values and the the um the strength of the confidence interval, like the 90, if it's 90%. 95% tells you how certain you are that the true population proportion would be in that interval. So it's definitely going to be E.